Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Covenator here bringing you a new tutorial series on the meanest, baddest, close air support jet fighter of all time. That's right, the A-10C Warthog. My goal is to hopefully explain things in such a way that it leaves you with a deep understanding of how the Hog works and how all of its core systems are tied together. Unlike other tutorials, this is not going to be just about which switches to push. I'm going to explain what those switches do, and more importantly, the systems behind them. If you're looking for a quick start tutorial, this series is not for you. My videos will be broken down into three different categories, basic, intermediate, and advanced. This video will start the series talking about the A-10's history. Other videos will discuss things like the general design and flight characteristics of the A-10, the gun and weapon stores used, cockpit controls, aircraft startup procedures, navigation, flight fundamentals, and much, much more. Intermediate videos will focus on actually flying the aircraft, putting together all the things we have learned. We will begin with taxi preparation and taxi, runway lineup checks, takeoffs, climbouts, basic maneuvers, landing the aircraft, aircraft shutdown and emergency procedures, and much more. Advanced videos will concentrate on combat employment, such as target area ingress preparations and in-depth look into all the various employments on the A-10, all of which should lead to you doing some exciting missions. Contact air defense target, 12 o'clock, 45. Hog 1-1, one, one, this is Finger. BTR platoon approaching our position from the west on hardball. Out. With that little overview out of the way, let's talk about the history of the A-10C from its conception to how it has evolved into what it is today. The idea of the A-10 came about from the experience of the U.S. forces in the Vietnam War. It quickly became apparent that we lacked close air support to troops in emergency situations. And while it was true that we did have fast jets like the F-100 and the F-4 Phantom, and of course the F-5, they lacked the much needed loiter time because they were too fast, and as a result, inaccurate with their weapon delivery. This criticism resulted in charges that the U.S. Air Force did not take close air support seriously. And perhaps it was true, they seemed to have their own war to fight, and probably didn't like taking orders from the Army anyway. Aircraft like the U-10 and the OV-10 were slow enough and had the loiter time, but lacked the firepower to be effective. The answer seemed to be the A-1 Sky Raider, which actually proved to be quite effective in Southeast Asia, but it was deemed to not have the survivability that we were looking for. Thus, the Pentagon pressed for the need for a new aircraft, one that was rugged and survivable with long loiter capability, the ability to carry large weapon loadouts, including anti-armor, excellent slow speed agility, and relatively short takeoff and landing rolls. So in 1966, the AX competition was created to build it, and by 1972, Republic Fairchild pre-production YA-10 came out on top, and after signing a $150 million contract, production was started. In 1975, the first A-10A was flown, and by 1976 there were six production units, all of which that were put through a series of trials which all passed with flying colors. I mean, look at the size of that cannon. One of my favorite features. If you're wondering, it fires a bullet about the size of your forearm. At the delivery of the 100 A-10A, the Pentagon christened the aircraft Thunderbolt II, although many in the A-10 community refer to it as the Warthog, or it's simply just the Hog for short. It seemed to be an adequate name due to its apparent ugliness and slow handling characteristics, although I think it's quite beautiful. In total, 715 A-10s were produced, the last of which was delivered in 1984, and over the years, the A-10 received many upgrade suites. The first of which upgraded the A-10 fleet with a low altitude safety and targeted enhancement system, a low altitude autopilot and ground collision avoidance system. The second suite added integrated GPS called Iggy and an integrated flight and fire control computer. And the latest upgrade started in 2005 changed the name of the A-10A to the A-10C and it included an upgraded glass cockpit, 
a complete wing replacement to support IM guided weapons like the JDAM, which were directly controlled by a new onboard digital storage management system. Overall, a GAO report places the potential total cost of the upgrades to be around $4.4 billion, quite a difference from the $159 million contract that started it all. Today, the A-10 is scheduled to stay in the service with the U.S. Air Force until 2028 and will continue to evolve with new upgrades. And while all this is pretty cool, for me, nothing beats the GAL-8 gun on the front firing a 30 mm around at 4,300 rounds per minute. I have some B-roll footage for you to watch some live gun exercises. I'm just going to shut up for a minute and let you watch this thing rock some tanks. well, doesn't it? Well, it's nothing. During Desert Storm in 1991, the A-10C killed 987 tanks, earning the Tank Killer, or Tank Buster title, and other various ground targets numbering into the thousands, giving the A-10C Warthog a 98.87 mission reliability rate. The A-10C was put into action again in 1999 during Operation Allied Force where it was credited with destroying more Serbian uh, destroyed weapons than any other aircraft. Although two A-10s received damage, not a single one was lost to enemy fire. That's because this thing is a tank. I mean, it's, it's made to take a beating. Um, whether it be small arms fire, surface-to-air missiles, low-level anti-aircraft gunfire, the A-10C always seemed to make it back in one piece. And that's part and due to the fact that the A-10 is designed to be able to return home with only one engine and half a wing blown off. Following the events of 9-11, the A-10C was deployed once again during Operation Iraqi Freedom and despite losing one aircraft the A-10C proved again to be very effective. So again and again the, the A-10C has pro proven itself to be a capable close air support aircraft from its massive payload of weapons, long loiter times, to its near indestructible airframe with tons of system redundancy, the A-10C is one of the best close air support aircrafts ever designed. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the A-10's design, starting with the gun fuselage, wings and control surfaces, and we'll spend some time going over the various flight control systems and of course the engines, the APU, and avionics, and all that other great stuff. In closing, if you like this video, please subscribe. It takes a lot of work to do these tutorials, and uh, subscribing to my channel means a lot. I plan to release a new video every week or so, so if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. And at very least, I hope you enjoyed this video and at least found it to be informative. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, this is the Covenator signing off.